in the last part we studied the representation of vectors okay how do we represent a vector quantity now there are some important point regarding vector okay <coughs> the first magnitude and direction does not implies that the quantity is surely a vector okay this means if a physical quantity have magnitude and direction it's not necessary that they may uh, that it might be a vector quantity okay it must also obey vector algebra vector algebra must also be obeyed okay now let's see direction in a circuit we say that the direction of current is from positive to negative okay now let's say a current of 2 ampere is flowing in this circuit okay now this circuit has the current as 2 ampere this means magnitude is 2 ampere of current as magnitude 2 ampere and also has direction direction as positive to negative but we know that current is a scalar quantity because current does not always current does not follows vector algebra or the polygon law of vector addition that we will study <coughs> in the next classes these laws are not followed by current then we cannot say that current is a vector quantity now let's see types of vector the first one is these are those vectors which represent rotational effect these are those vectors which exhibit rotational effect okay and they act along act along axis of rotation in accordance with right hand thumb rule now we all know what a right hand thumb rule is right so the act actual vectors exhibit rotational effect and they act along the axis of rotation in accordance with the right hand thumb rule okay for example let's take an example of axial vector as angular displacement is ex exhibit rotational effect as the, the right hand the fingers of a right hand curl in the direction of the rotational effect then the thumb of our right hand represents the direction of that vector so this is the vector which is acting on a point and exhibiting a rotational effect okay 
the second one is polar vector these have a point of starting in case of displacement let's say as an example or a point of application point of application in case of force now let's see everyone knows how displacement and force acts say this is the starting point starting point okay and this is the final point now how do we represent a displacement in this case by joining initial and final point by a straight line and representing it like this okay so this has point of application or a starting point such vectors are known as polar vectors let us see a point of application also let's say this is any block of wood kept on a horizontal surface then let's say if we apply a force then we have to show the point of application in order to represent a force so a force have a point of application hence it is a type of polar vector the third type is null vector null or zero vector these have magnitude as zero magnitude is equal to zero and the direction is indeterminate hence the vectors which direction is indeterminate and have the magnitude as zero such vectors are known as null vectors okay example a displacement example displacement of particle at rest the displacement of particle at rest represents a null vector as its magnitude is zero we know that if a particle is at rest it's not moving hence the displacement will be zero but in which direction the direction is indeterminate hence we can say that such null or zero vectors which have magnitude as zero and direction indeterminate okay now there is this unit vector it has magnitude the vectors which have magnitude equal to 1 and direction same as the given vector okay same as given vector now what does this represent same as given vector okay unit vector is never having its own direction okay we will never see a unit vector alone it will be given that unit vector in a direction of some vector okay let's say we find out unit vector okay it's we represent a unit vector is a cap okay this is the cap so it is represented as a cap or a caret okay if i write like this this means b cap or b caret
okay now let's see in the direction of a vector unit vector is given by a cap is equal to d vector a upon the magnitude of vector a is equal to vector upon its magnitude okay the direction of a cap will be same as a vector okay student this was unit vector In order to define a physical quantity, they are classified in two categories. The first one is scalar, and the second one is vector. Now the scalar quantities are those quantities which can be defined with the help of their magnitude this means scalars have only magnitude and vectors have magnitude direction and always and always vector algebra Now this is the mind map. So let's see. <coughs> Physical quantities. They are classified in two types. The first one is scalar. And the second one is vectors okay now let's see the examples of scalar quantity First of all, time. Time is a scalar quantity because it is independent of any direction. If say in y direction, y direction two seconds means two seconds. in every direction this means time is independent of direction hence we can say that time is a scalar quantity okay now let's say what is vector we needed magnitude and direction magnitude as well as direction to define a vector so let's take an example as force a force of 2 newton in y direction does not means that it is same everywhere 
okay this means a force of q newton is only in y direction let's say this is the x axis and this is the y axis okay the force of q newton in y direction means it is in this direction only it is in this direction only okay it is not in x direction it is not in z direction or any other direction now let's see why vectors are important why do we need it vectors <coughs> see scalar quantities were able to describe many physical quantities but we need we need vectors in solving problems of mechanics and geometry in order to solve problems in mechanics and geometry vectors are very important as vector analysis is a very powerful tool okay now let's see how we represent a vector representation of vector we use bold spaces in order to represent vectors okay now if i have to represent a vector then this is the normal way and if i have to represent a vector then how i represent it in bold okay this is bold a now as you see it is very hard to use this bold a this bold a in our regular practice this is bold face this is very hard to draw so how we represent a vector it is represented by a arrow head this means a vector okay both are the correct representation of vectors but generally this arrow head is used to represent a vector okay now if i have to represent a velocity vector then generally it is represented by v velocity is represented as v vector this is how we represent a vector now let's see how the magnitude of vector is represented the absolute value of vector any vector let's say this vector we have to find out we have to find out the magnitude of v vector it is represented as or the absolute value of vector v okay now let's see some properties of vector properties of vector the first property is along with direction and magnitude okay sorry in in addition to magnitude and unit this have magnitude 
and unit a vector must also have first of all direction okay it has a specified direction second it obeys it follows parallelogram law of vector addition addition of vectors is commutative okay this means vector addition is commutative okay what does this means it means say p vector plus q vector is equal to q vector plus p vector okay vector addition follows the commutative property now the graphical representation of vector how do we represent a vector in graph now <coughs> it is represented with a line graphical representation is represented by a line with an arrow head okay let's say this is any line it is represented by this arrow head okay this is the arrow head and the length and this length l of the line this represents the magnitude and this is the this arrow head this arrow head shows direction So the length of the line which we draw represents the magnitude and the direction is given by the arrow head okay the length of this vector the length of this vector let's say l1 l1 is less than l as we can see so this means if this is say b vector and this is a vector okay then this definitely means magnitude of b vector is less than magnitude of a vector and what can we say about the direction it is in opposite direction b is opposite to a okay now let's do some examples how to represent a vector in a graph okay let's say we have to represent a force of 50 newton in east and say 30 newton in south okay now first of all let's draw these direction this is north this is east west Okay, fifteen newton in east. Let's first of all we have to take some scale. Okay, 
it's not in a graph just as we take the scale we take one centimeter say equal to 10 newton okay this means one centimeter on that graph will represent a 10 newton of force and now if i have to represent 50 newton on this point in each direction where is this it is in this direction i have to draw a 5 centimeter long line in order to represent this 50 newton vector okay this is in each direction and this is 5 centimeter and 1 centimeter is equal to 10 newton then 5 centimeter is equal to 50 newton and it is in each direction so this is the representation of 50 newton in east now i have to represent 30 newton in south so south direction 3 centimeter line 